New ADV and dual sport riders have a lot of anxieties, but in my experience, they're often afraid of the wrong things. I'm the dork in the road, and today I want to talk about seven things I wish I'd known before I started riding off-road on motorcycles, dual sport, and adventure bikes. First thing I wish I'd known before I started off-road, dual sport, and adventure riding is that your street gear is fine to start, with a few exceptions. It's easy to get the idea in your head that you need all new climb gear, that you need a peaked helmet, that you need this ADV-specific gear. Plenty of marketing out there designed to convince you that you need that gear in order to ride safely or in order to do the thing. And sometimes you don't know the difference, but what you need to do is make sure that you have abrasion protection, that is slide protection, and impact protection, that is elbow pads, knee pads, things like that. And honestly, for at least what most beginners do, your street gear is going to provide that. With the exception of boots, we'll talk more about that in a minute. I started on my street gear. I've got some great pictures of Duck Fan and I riding back in friggin' 2016. A great picture of him in his Dionese gear with his Arai street helmet. So you do not need adventure specific gear. There are advantages to a peaked helmet. Uh, typically they have a wider eye port, which is better to accommodate goggles. That's nicer for airflow when you're riding slower, stuff like that. But there are disadvantages. Uh, such as that peak is kind of noisy on the highway, so you do not need that to start. Uh, and as you grow and learn and become a better rider and realize that off-road riding is something you want to do, you can start to invest in that more off-road specific gear, but it's not required to get started. Second thing I wish I'd known before I started off-road riding is uh, I was afraid of things that I didn't need to be afraid of, and I'm guessing that some of you new riders are too. For example, that very first same ride that I talked about where Duck Fan and I went out on our dual sports, I spent the whole time terrified. This is embarrassing to admit. Seriously was afraid that if I hit a wrong shaped piece of gravel or went into too loose a gravel, that a sharp piece of gravel would put a hole in my thick rubber dual sport tire. Now I have ridden over all kinds of crap that I shouldn't have ridden over since then and I've only had a flat one time and that was caused by the tire rubbing on the tube on the inside. It wasn't even a puncture. So that fear was unfounded. I didn't need to be afraid of that. I can remember a time when I first got my Africa Twin, I went out on this ride and there was a hill on a gravel road, not even a really bad gravel road, but it was a pretty tall hill, 20, 30 feet, and I couldn't really see the top. And I was like, oh man, I hope I can get up that. I mean, I knew I could get up it, but I'm always afraid I'm not gonna be able to turn around or stop if I need to. And your motorcycle will just go up that stuff. Those fears are unfounded. For the most part, a logging road is designed for log trucks. If a log truck can go there, you can too, especially if it's one that's not abandoned or anything. So you don't really need to be afraid of that stuff. Be cautious. Don't ride outside your comfort zone. Don't push yourself too far, but have confidence that your bike will be able to handle most of what you throw at it or that you're willing to throw at it in the beginning. A lot of new riders are afraid of dropping their bikes. And I got to tell you, dropping your bike on an ADV or a dual sport is as common as getting gas. Man, it just happens all the time. Off-road drops rarely incur any damage. If it does, it's like a scrape. And if your bike is well protected, handguards in particular, always go with handguards first because the handlebars almost always hit the ground. Uh, it's going to be fine. You're not crashing at 80 miles an hour. You're falling over when you screwed up and failed to navigate a turnaround on a gravel road and you're going one mile an hour. You step off the bike, you don't even hit the ground. I have crashed a hundred times. I have hit the ground seven. Seven times, maybe, something like that. I, I rarely crash hard enough that I can't just drop the bike and walk off. So just get that first ding out of the way. I always say when my, my new bike gets its first scratch, then it's truly mine and I can stop worrying about it. One big thing a lot of new riders are afraid of, and I was guilty of this myself, is the squirreliness of your bike. Riding off-road is squirrely. Your bike is going to move around and dance in a way that it does not when you're riding on the road, particularly at high speeds. Your front end is going to wobble back and forth like this when you're riding on gravel. Just part of the experience. you got to stay loose and get used to it. If you're riding on mud or climbing a muddy hill, your rear end is going to move back and forth. Even on the best tires, when you get on a slippery surface, that rear end is going to dance a little. If you stand up, it's not as scary. You don't feel it as much. But when your butt is planted on the seat, you are swinging with the bike and that can be a little intimidating. Same thing in sand. The front and the rear are going to wobble. You just got to stay loose and understand that off-road riding is not the same as road riding and there's instability and it's okay. It's part of the experience. I can't tell you how many times I thought I had a flat tire riding on gravel because the front was so wobbly, but nah, it's just like that. Just get used to it. Just understand that squirreliness is part of the experience. You don't have to be afraid of that. However, the third thing I wish I'd known before I started riding motorcycles off-road is that I was not afraid of some things I should have 
have been. That last bullet was a list of things you don't actually need to be afraid of, but you should be afraid of things like lower leg injuries, okay? I said your street gear is fine, and for the most part that's true, but one big exception to that is your boots. 20% or more of injuries to off-road riders are from the shin down, that is your ankle, your foot. I can't tell you how many times I've had my foot smashed between a rock and my bike, or between a log and my bike. I've dropped the bike on my leg. It is easy to twist your ankle or get screwed up in uneven terrains, particularly when you're moving at speed and you got to do one of those step-offs of your bike. So do not ride off-road without real off-road boots. None of this hiking boot crap. None of this, oh, I've got steel toes, so I'm okay. If the boot flexes back and forth, you don't want that when you're riding off-road. You need a sturdy boot. Now, my go-to is the Alpine Stars Corazals. Those are a little bit more expensive, the $300 boots, but you can pick up a pair of the O'Neill MX boots, the Element or Riders, Rider, I think. Rider boots, they're like $130. I cannot stress enough how important that is. Go on Facebook Marketplace and find an old pair of MX boots. You don't need MX level protection for most of the adventure riding that we do, but something better than a regular street boot, than a shoe, than a hiking boot is very necessary. So you should be afraid of lower leg injuries, and you're probably not as a new rider. So here I am telling you to be afraid, be very afraid. The other thing that I was not afraid of, that I should have been afraid of as a new rider, was sitting down. Sitting down on the bike, is not actually helping you. You should stand up when things get tricky. You have so much more control of the bike when you're standing up because you can shift your weight, you're disconnected from the bike, you're not moving with it and feeling every bump and slide and twist and turn the way you are when you're sitting down. You can see better when you're standing up. You can see farther ahead. If it's squirrely and feels weird sitting down, standing up eliminates a lot of that because your knees become suspension and you can move independently of the bike. Standing up used to scare me, right? I was farther from the ground, felt like I had less control but I'm telling you, develop those standing skills. Even if you have to start on easy gravel, just standing up and getting used to where the levers are, getting used to shifting standing up. That one took me a long time to learn, but I'm telling you, if you're afraid of standing up, that is not something you should be afraid of. Number four, and this is a founding principle of this channel. It is easy to look at adventure riding content, at off-road motorcycling content, and see Poltares launching a Yamaha Tenere 700 out of a rock quarry 25 feet in the air. Tons of content out there like that. It is easy to get the impression from the prevailing content that's out there that you have to be some kind of hardcore rider to enjoy off-road riding. It, it alienates and makes people not even attempt to get into the sport. It makes people feel like they're less than because they don't do all the crazy hardcore things. But I'm telling you right now, go to an ADV rally, go to the Turretech ride, go to the Giant Loop ride, go to the Get On ADV Fest, whatever it is, and look around. You are surrounded by a bunch of middle-aged dudes. These are not your hardcore riders. There is the young crowd, there are women. It's a diverse community, not super diverse, but there is diversity within the community. But for the most part, the people out there doing adventure riding are middle-aged men, and what they're doing is exploring the woods. They're going camping, they're exploring the woods. They are not hardcore riding up a rock face like Ryan from Giant Loop did in the videos I filmed with him. We're not all Paul Tares, despite what the media suggests. One of the big goals of this channel is to show you what it's like when regular people do regular things. I'm just a regular guy. I'm, I'm overweight. I'm old. I'm out of shape. But I'm out there enjoying the woods and having adventures, and you can too. Hear me say this. If you hear nothing else, there is nothing wrong with just enjoying the scenery at your own pace, even if you never leave a well-manicured logging road. Do not let gatekeeping douchebags discourage you. Do not let people project their insecurities onto you. Do not let the so-called hardcore who can't stand the idea that what you're doing, not as well as them, could also be called ADV riding and that would put them in the same category as someone who is a beginner or not super skilled or doesn't want to be hardcore. They can't handle that and so they project and gatekeep and try to discourage you. Don't be discouraged by those people. Meet the community, look around, see who's in it and understand that whatever you choose to do with your motorcycle on or off road, However you choose to use the thing that you bought is the right way. The best bike to take on adventures is the bike that you have. The best place to ride is where you are or where you can get to or where you feel comfortable going. You do not have to be hardcore to enjoy ADV, dual sport, motorcycle riding. You don't have to go camping. You don't have to do BDRs. You don't have to do anything. You just have to ride an ADV bike or a dual sport or a regular street motorcycle off-road or whatever you want to do. The number five thing that I wish I'd known before I started riding off-road is this is a large community and there are many, many adjacent sports and activities that you can get into. 
I started riding off-road on a dual sport motorcycle on a CRF 250L with one goal in mind. I wanted to go explore the logging roads nearby uh, in the areas that I used to explore when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, near my old hometown. I just wanted to go up, see some pretty views, ride the logging roads, and explore places I hadn't been. And I did that slowly. It was not about riding fast or hard, it was about getting out and exploring. And that was great at first, but as I started riding, I discovered other things I could do. I started taking my dual sport trail riding. OHV areas are now open to you. If you have a dual sport or adventure or dirt bike even, you can take those bikes and ride those trails. And that is a fantastic way to build your skills. ADV riding is a whole thing, like uh, going camping, going on long distance rides. People get on their GSs and take them from one end of the country to another. Moto camping is one of my favorite activities on a motorcycle, but I did not get into motorcycles with the intention of going motorcycle camping. I'd always loved camping. I started riding motorcycles. It made sense to put the two together, but that was not my intention from the beginning. There are rallies and, and events you can go to. So you can go to the Giant Loop Ride, hang out, camp for the weekend with a bunch of cool people, go on daily rides on the tracks they provide. Same thing at Turretech and other places. That's a big part of the community that you can go and experience that I didn't even know existed when I started riding off-road. And the ultimate sort of thing you can do is like BDRs, long multi-day trips through the backcountry, camping, hoteling, whatever it is you want to do, get out there, explore, and just know that you don't have to do any of those things, but all those things are open to you if you get into the sport and start feeling like, man, I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to try even more things. Number six thing I wish I'd known before I started riding off-road is a tough one for me to this day, and that is freaking relax, man. I get in my head about the terrain, about the difficulty of the terrain, about what difficult things are coming up on the terrain. You know, I spend the whole time worrying about a worst case scenario and I forget to lift my head up and look around and see the gorgeous, amazing stuff that I'm in, right? And I don't look around. I literally miss the forest for the trees. If you got into dual sport or adventure riding to enjoy nature, enjoy scenery, enjoy awesome views like me, then stop and look at them once in a while. Relax. Don't get so focused on the trail in front of you that you forget to enjoy being out in it. Stop. Take a deep breath. Look around. Take a picture. Thank God I have to take so many pictures for social media because it forces me to stop and enjoy the views and I would encourage you to do the same. And the seventh and final thing I wish I'd known before I started dual sport and adventure riding is a big surprise to me. I've made so many friends and not just like casual acquaintances like hey what's up. Lifelong friends. People with whom I've entrusted my life right. We go out on these long distance rides out in the backcountry together and I have to know that if I crash and break my leg, that person's going to stay level-headed enough to help me. We saw it in action on my Washington BDR trip. Some really good friends and some really amazing relationships and also honestly my business opportunities. You know, I started, I was just a teacher that rode on the weekends and now this is my job. So there's a huge community of amazing people. Do not let the pithy comments or the gatekeeping people with the loudest voices drive you away or keep you from going to visit the community. For the most part, when I go to these events and see people in person, everyone is incredibly friendly. They're generous. They invite you to sit by their fire and share their beer. They share their peach cobbler with you. Shout out Veterans Back 40 Adventures. All they want to do is talk about things that you both, you all love. Riding motorcycles in the woods or wherever it is that you ride. You automatically have something in common. Nobody is there to gatekeep or judge you for not knowing enough, or for being new. And it's amazing. It's an amazing community. And I wish I had known that was going to be a benefit of this when I got started riding. So that is seven things I wish I'd known before I started riding motorcycles off-road. What do you wish you you had known before you started riding motorcycles off-road? Leave that in the comments. That'll be super helpful to the new riders who are watching this and uh, how does my experience line up with yours if you are an experienced rider? Let me know that in the comments. Also, if you got something out of the video, if you enjoyed it, you want to see more sort of dual sport and adventure uh, advice, tips and tricks, informational content, please don't hesitate to subscribe because I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Excellent! Also, uh, one of the things that used to, to give me the butterflies in the tummy is uh, one of the things that used to scare... One of the things that used to pucker up the old... Mm.